Fuck me and my fucking asshole. It's we're back with Rick's Two Minutes, everybody. Season three, episode six. Rest and relaxation. I am the best guy ever, and here's Digibro. Uh, we're back. Suck me. You sound you sound like you're toxic, <laughs> Digi. You're, you're. I am quite toxic. Toxic. I'm a toxic animal. Yeah. I'm the toxic Avenger. Uh. This is a good episode, man. Yeah, real good episode. Real good. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. This took me back, in a way, to what I think is um, a lot of the best Rick and Morty episodes, which is take a just really interesting fucking sci-fi concept and see what you can do with it. Yep. Um, yep. Which I don't feel like we've had as much of this season. Maybe the first episode with the whole... Um, yeah, yeah. Going into, like, his memories and shit, but... The start of season two was a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Like the this reminded me of like the planet that was alive episode kind of with the the usage of the uh, concept and seeing where they could go with it. Planet and, that was alive, as in the uh, what was her name? Fuck, uh, his girlfriend, yeah. that lady. That's yeah, the about. girlfriend. Yeah, lady. okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, this was uh, this is really great shit. Uh, there's no like there's no like evil foe to conquer in this episode so there's no need to like worry or there, there's none of this shit where like we're, we're second guessing like why doesn't rick just do this why doesn't rick just fucking yeah. blah 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 no it doesn't fucking matter because the conflict is internal this episode exactly yeah. where it should be for this shit it's it felt perfect. tight and yeah, it's man. i i kind of love when they it I can call it an excuse, but i think it's clever writing mm -hmm. when they put the characters in a situation where they can't solve it because of just like personal like mental limitations yeah. like in this case the you know this could be resolved easily if they were whole but the fact is that they're not and that's the whole problem you know yeah um plus it's pussy a, it's rick a, mm -hmm, won't you. do you know won't go through with what uh other rick would right of course toxic and rick and I mean, what makes it interesting is like these are, uh, like they're approaching it on a on a level that makes sense to all of us. Like we can all imagine yeah. what our toxic sides are. And it's really interesting when when you get to the end of the episode where it turns out that the toxic parts, it, it everyone it, it defines for themselves what their toxic parts are that may yeah. or may not be what the rest of us think they are. And that so, was a fucking great twist. Yeah, it was awesome. It was fantastic. Like, it because it made me realize, you know, like this whole episode. These are the obviously toxic parts of Rick and Morty that we're seeing. Yep. The idea that Rick's a violent maniac who thinks he's a god and just, you know, is <laughs> completely full of himself. Mm -hmm. But when we find out that this is what Rick thinks are the toxic parts of himself, it really recontextualizes it quite a bit. That, like, even he wishes he wasn't like that, but he also wishes he wasn't, uh, he didn't have, like, love and feelings like that, yeah. you know? Like, he'd like to be a nice, polite, regular dude, but he still wants to be a cold, asocial, uh, you know, um, psycho and it's great that, man. and it's great that since like morty kind of like those are the uh, the the traits that he would consider positive about himself like he wants to be that right. american psycho like a amoral you know unfeeling uh cutthroat businessman kind of guy that that rick identifies as like that's what he wants to get rid of but morty wants to keep those things because of his deep deeper yeah. insecurities and it, it just makes it, it it's making it so that None of this is like an objective stance as to like what is actually good and bad about a person by couching it in this this is how a, a, the individual identifies as their bad points it gives it this great air of subjectivity where it's just we just get to more understand the characters themselves and how they perceive these things as opposed to like you know Dan Harmon making a stance about like oh if you have feelings if you love you're weak you know any of that yeah. that bullshit it's, it's not making that point at all it's just talking about the characters which uh, it's great yeah. it's much more interesting Smart shit. I will no say one thing. If I have one complaint or doubt about this episode, it's would Morty really be this good just by losing his toxic side? That did occur to me as well. Yeah. Like, just by not being such a huge coward. Well, and... <laughs> you know, I mean, one of my favorite moments in the entire show is in the entire episode is when Morty just like confronts Rick. He, like, tells him, like, you are not fucking getting in the back. It'd be real dangerous for you if you fucking went back and got, like, yeah. our shitty sides. And then as he's walking away, fucking football just arrives in his hands. <laughs> and he fucking tosses it back and keeps that, going. Like, I, yeah. like the, the levels of absurdity as to how perfect Morty's life has become because he's lost yeah. this, like, are comedically uh, just, just fucking perfect. Like, they're way over the top. And they're I great. love how obnoxious he is. Yeah. And that the episode's <laughs> willing to just dwell on it. Like, just oh, really, yeah. like, go, they go so hard hard on like the cornball element of it like he's just mm -hmm. telling stupid jokes that aren't funny and like 
it, it, for a second I'm like groaning and then I'm like, oh, that's the point, mm-hmm. you know? Like mm-hmm. you got me, you motherfucker. Exactly. <laughs> it's like I constantly felt that way throughout uh, his scenes. And I, I sort of felt like um, uh, the, the the elements that propel him to such levels of success are just his absolute confidence, and uh, you yeah. know, really that's that that can that can make a huge difference in somebody's life. And you can see like Toxic Morty, which is his complete like. <laughs> disgust with himself on every possible level. Uh, yeah, leaving, leaving you know, healthy Morty, yeah. quote-unquote healthy Morty, to be just this fucking powerhouse of confidence. Yeah, like, I can see why he'd do well, you know, when he goes and becomes, like, a broker or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it ma- makes sense, makes sense. How, my favorite character in this episode is um, random, face? random slut that, <laughs> that Big Morty tits picks make, up what's at the bar. Yeah. I fucking love her. I felt a, I felt a certain uh, tingling in my loins when I gazed <laughs> upon this character. <laughs> the, the line where he's, uh, where she's like, should I leave? And he's like, you're a free person. Do what you want. Yeah. And she's like, I choose to stay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was a bit of a delight. I liked her a lot. Yeah. I knew, I I was really happy because like I knew that they were gonna end up trapping her in the machine. Mm-hmm. But what I was really hoping was that either she'd escape or just be like like a badass down. Like I knew she was gonna be in the end after credit se- segment. Yeah, yeah. Like no question after she got trapped in there, and didn't like like I would have been really bummed out if they'd like killed her. You know, and this is, I've, I've been saying all season that the show has been writing right on the line between being like overly gross and Mm -hmm. like, and, and acceptable. And like, there's still an insane violent scene in this where all these little kids chop off a clown's head and it's (laughs) fucking horrible, but it was great because it's a character nobody cares about. It's just a one-off gag and it's, it works Mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. Um, like if this girl had gotten killed, that would have been like, this is like, why, why she was likable. I liked her. Don't kill her. And I'm glad this show still has that sense of knowing like when to push the violent button and when not to. And, um, you know, it's continued. There's only been like a couple places where I thought like uh, the aforementioned one of the Avengers episode, Mm -hmm. I was like, eh, we have to kill that guy so gruesomely, but it wasn't a big deal. And I didn't like that episode anyways. So, yep. Yep. You know. But here I felt it was done just right. You know, um, okay, can I just bring up – so people have been making a, a – there's been a, a contention this whole season that I, we haven't addressed on this show yet. The issue of the quote-unquote female writers, are you aware of this? Are you aware of this meme that's going around? Yeah, I don't – like, I mean, didn't the show always have female writers on I honestly it? don't know. I thought that I should prepare, but then I also didn't. Uh, so yeah. I, I have not looked into this at all. I, I don't know. Comment people. Give give me like reasons to take this seriously. Like, I don't every know what this time, means. Every time it gets brought up, mm-hmm. it's like it's completely inconsequential because everyone agrees Pickle Rick was an amazing episode. And it was yeah. written by a woman. Oh, okay. and then like so, you know, where do we go from? The, like, what what is the side you're trying to take here? You're trying to say mm-hmm. the female writers are good or bad because. We've already proved they've done like the both the best and worst episodes of the season were written by a woman. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. where you know, I mean, all I, all <laughs> I can tell point? people making this is just uh, show me an itemized list. Show me the correlations here, because yeah. uh, Pickle Rick was perfect. Uh, this episode was fantastic, uh, and then the the Avengers one and the the Mad Max one, like those are pretty lame overall. So like, yeah. I, I don't know. If these were like diversity hires that made the show worse, I don't know. Prove that to me in some way. I don't know. Do do the work for me, yeah. people. That's what I'm asking of you. It's. I think they're just trying to make it a meme, but like yeah. the meme can't stick if the if some of the best episodes are written by women. Like you can't meme it if it's just not even true. I think some so. people disliked Pickle Rick just for like they didn't pay attention to how good the episode was and instead focused <laughs> on like the memery. Of it, like, yeah. oh, Pickle Rick, uh, so funny. Except that episode was fucking great, so, you know, I don't yeah. I don't know what there is to complain about. Um, well, anyway, I don't know. I just thought I'd bring that up. Like, people have been saying that for a while, and I didn't really yeah. know if you had any insight to, to bring to the, no, to the table. No, I, like I said, the first thing I heard about it mm-hmm. was, well, Pickle Rick was written by a woman, and I was like, well, okay, uh, there's no problem. I guess women well, are the <laughs> best writers then, as it turns yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, yeah, maybe people are just out to witch hunt on the show for seemingly having more women than it had before. I don't fucking know. I know everyone who works on Rick and Morty gets fucking poached. So like, 
if, if they hired more women, it's probably because they ran out of whoever was writing the show before, mm-hmm. you know, and the new mm-hmm. hires are just as good as the old ones. Who the fuck cares? All the goddamn <laughs> men are ascending too high in the patriarchy. We have to fill these yeah. slots with the, the lowly women. Hey, what can we do? Uh, so, hey, can, can we talk about how fucking, uh, I don't know, spine-shatteringly intense the opening scene of this episode was? Because I, I <laughs> fucking loved awesome. it. It was the coolest thing was, ever. I was not in control of, my of that scenes. situation at any point, Morty. <laughs> that, that really fucking got me. That, uh, that's, that, was great. Oh, that was great. That's another thing... Uh, I've, I mean, we've. This has happened many times throughout this show, mm-hmm. but the way that this show will have like full blown Lovecraft shit happen to the minds of these characters, and then <laughs> find a reason to just wipe it under the rug. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we had uh, the Roy game in season two. Mm-hmm where Morty experiences an entire lifetime as another person. <laughs> we just had in the last episode the whole mind meld for an epoch thing. Right, right. And now right. we've got this, like, deep trauma to the point of we're never going on another adventure for both of them, <laughs> for even Rick. Yep. But then they go to a spa, and they're like, you know, well, you just got to work through that stress. And <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, it was great. That was great. And, uh, yeah, I just love seeing, like, the alien spa and all the stuff they were doing there. And yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, it's not a major point. But seeing, like, w- once we saw, like, Toxic Rick and Toxic Morty trapped in the tank yeah. and just realizing that they're, like, in this world, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Something about that was just really cool. Being in this – like, yeah. seeing sort of, like, the uh, sort of the anthropomorphization of, like, the inside of, like, this toxic tank or, or yeah. something like that. I don't know. Something about that was really dope. I really liked it a I lot. really – I love this sci-fi idea just because of the fact that they mm-hmm. they go to a spa and detox, which is like in mm-hmm. in reality a load of horse shit. Yeah. Like <laughs> detoxing is not like a a thing that works as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's like bro science, you know. Sounds like a meme to so, me. Yeah. Yeah. So like especially the like oh I'm going on like a three day detox where I have to like swallow a fucking rope and then shit it out over the course of three oh, days. Yeah. You know about those <laughs> ones. Like yep. you know, that's what they're making fun of here, but it's a sci fi version where not only does it work, but it's like literally everything toxic about you psychologically removed. Like mm-hmm. just such a good idea. And then to make a whole story out of that idea is genius yeah it was great it's just really smart and uh really you know seeing you know uh, a clean rick or, or healthy rick you know being guilted into into bringing yeah. back him and and even being guilted into like oh morty we gotta reabsorb our dark parts they're they're part of us morty we can't we can't I, live without them that's uh um, i really loved um that rick i yeah. loved fixed rick because they didn't make it Oh, they didn't overdo it. It didn't make him like a like an actual total pussy. He's yeah. just like a reasonable guy who's mo- very interested in science. You know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. he just wants to be a scientist, man. Like that's that's the Rick's perfect vision of himself is just a man who wants to do science. Just a reasonable guy who who wants to do that. You know, yeah. and like that's yeah. what he would consider an idealized version of himself. But but that. That idealized version is such a moralist that he can't stand to leave behind, you know, a, a part of himself that he feels he wronged by, you know, doing this too. Mm-hmm. So, by the even way, even at a detriment to himself, he's so self-sacrificing. Yeah, yeah. That he would help uh, this other person, whereas Morty sees himself a perfect version of him would not sacrifice anything for anyone. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It kind of just shows that. Uh... Deep down, Morty is kind of a worse person than Rick, you know, at least in the way that, like, he wishes that he could be. You know, he wishes it's, to yeah. be this kind of amoral guy, which I totally relate to. I t- I'm totally in agreement with Morty. I would, I wish I was that uh, well, American psycho Morty. I've said many times that my favorite thing about Rick is that underneath all the psychopathy, he mm-hmm. is a moralist. And now we've been made fun of on the previous episode for suggesting that Rick was a better person than uh, Jerry. We have. Because Rick's Rick's killed so many fucking people and all that shit. But Rick Which also one? has mm-hmm. uh, created entire worlds that run perfectly fine. He's, you know, create his amount of things he's brought to the world is pro- possibly greater than the amount of destruction he's caused. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say it probably more likely evens out, considering that on the Council of Ricks, they said he was, like, right in between being a full evil and a full good. He's, right, like, right. the perfect middle ground. Um, but, you know, a middle ground as a Rick is not 
oh, I don't kill anybody, but I also don't really contribute to society. It's, <laughs> I kill swaths of people, but I also, like, create entire utopias and shit and, yeah. you know, occasionally help people. So, like, I do think there's a moral center to Rick that's always been there. Mm-hmm. and Whereas Morty has... You know, he's just an idiot who's been strung into this world where he's developed this nihilistic personality and doesn't care about anything for real. So, like, yep. you know, it's a bit of a bit of a give and take there. It's it's, it's interesting true. to and and I, and I really don't better. think uh, toxic Rick's point should be discounted. Like, you you've got to imagine yourself in Rick's perspective here. Everyone around him is a fucking like worthless piece of protoplasm. Like, he yeah. is a literal god compared to these people with with his abilities like to even give one ounce of an iota of a shit about any of these creatures that you know you have access to infinite alternate versions of like uh, frank like the the moral labor enacted to do that is frankly more than any of us could possibly imagine in any of our lives because we're like a lot of us only act kind because we have to act kind or society will destroy us. Rick is above society in every possible way. He chooses to act morally. None of us ever have to, like, with, how about the great, with great power comes great responsibility? Considering yeah. the incredible power Rick has, he is goddamn saintly because he could just evaporate our universe yeah. if he felt and like And granted, it. he will do that sometimes yes, if he, he flies off the handle. <laughs> like, we're not saying that he always makes the right choice, yeah. but the fact that he ever makes the right choice is almost shocking. Exactly. There's you a know, context like, to it. Mm-hmm. Like, again, back in episode two with the, the the Road Warrior world, like, if he wanted to, he could have just killed everyone and left, but mm-hmm. he just didn't, I don't know, didn't feel up to just murdering everybody that episode. The people, <laughs> The people making those kinds of points, I think, should listen to Bill Burr's comments on Tiger Woods. Like, all these, all these fat, middle-aged pieces of shit, like, waddling out when they hear that Tiger Woods cheated on his wife, they waddle out to their fucking sedans, you know, their fucking Honda <laughs> Civics, and they're like, oh, absolutely reprehensible behavior from Tiger. Oh, it's absolutely disgusting. Meanwhile, they have never once ever had to face the kind of challenge that Tiger Woods did at his peak when he would walk off the club and there'd be a fucking busload of of fucking uh, Swedish cheerleaders wanting to fuck him all at the same time. When have you people ever faced the kind of challenge that Tiger or Rick has? (laughs) Never once in your fucking life. So I don't want to hear you commenting on this shit. Like, oh, why doesn't he just be perfect all the time? Get fucked. I don't have any sympathy for these people. (laughs) Rick is, uh, Rick's, uh... He's a, he's a complicated man. Like, how many times have you crushed an ant in your life? At least once, probably. That's what human yeah. beings are like to Rick. There's a context, people. There's a context. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful rant there. Oh, thank uh, you. What the <laughs> fuck was this episode about again? I don't know. Toxic? <laughs> uh, hey, uh, how about uh, it was pretty cool when they made the whole world toxic. Uh, that was, that was, yeah. was kind of cool. Uh, what did they, I, I, all I can remember is them, uh, the, the children murdering the clown. Oh, the priest, yeah. the priest being like, ah, oh, God, yeah. we steal money from you. God's not real. Ha ha. Yeah. Fedora, and then everybody bro. starts fucking. And then the mm-hmm. people from like Sabaros and some salad place, like switch places for some reason. I was trying to interpret was, what that joke meant. I didn't meant. really understand that one. I think like the fat people went into like the Mexican restaurant and then after it went back, they went back to like the salad place. I, I don't know. I, I lost track. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. It wasn't Mexican. It was a Sabaro. Yeah. Oh, yes. Pizza it's a Sabaro. Place. Right, right. Uh, oh, hey, one other cool thing about this. Uh, the fight scene between Ricks was pretty fucking dope, especially when yeah. they, like, murdered each other and they had to, like, regrow oh, fuck, their yeah. fucking body. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Which is another one that has... Like, that's the thing. A lot of the coolest tricks in this episode are things that have been done before. Mm-hmm. Like, that is something we've seen... We've had a uh, in episode one when Morty knocks over the like the tank with an alien baby and it like grows all the way into old age in a second. Yeah, yeah. We've had Rick. Don't think um, about it, Morty. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. We've had him kill other versions of himself and take their bodies at the start of the season. Like we've seen a lot of Rick using weird regrowth and rebirth techniques, but it's still cool. But I do think this is one of those things where it's like. This show has a limited number of seasons that it can still be impressive like this. That's true. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, if we see this another time, it's going to start to be like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. Rick can science himself back to life. 
you know, uh, how many times are we going down that road? Because I thought it was cool as shit, but it didn't have that shocking, like, hanging in my psyche like that scene from episode one did with the alien that don't think about it because I couldn't help but think about yeah, it. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this fight kind of reminded me, uh, you know, for obvious reasons of, uh, you know, that fight. I, I, I once, I first saw it on YouTube as the most cartoony anime fight ever between uh, Araragi and uh, Vampire Girl, where they just pop each other's heads off repeatedly. And uh, you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen this? You know what I'm talking about? I don't about? think so. Is it recent? It might be yeah, from, it's, the it's from the third Kizumonogatari film. It was basically I the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. And uh, yeah. it makes me understand why people watch that show. Like, so I yeah. gotta fucking do that Monogatari's sometime. Monogatari's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people would say you should watch the films first, because they are technically a prequel to everything else in the series. But aren't prequels supposed to be watched after you know? Ah, eh, whatever. It I mean, doesn't matter. I, I mean, they, the book was like the second book. But it's taken them the ah, longest Jesus. to adapt, so yeah. You know. right. Well, enough about bullshit anime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, and nothing else. I mean, we pretty much covered everything that was great. Oh, hey, how about the uh, the additional little extra layer of character that was added to Jessica, and she like actually seems to have some feelings. Yeah, for, uh, what's for up with that? I don't know, man. It seems like it's going somewhere. I mean, I can't. I can't really remember how she's been treated because she wasn't around much in season two and hasn't yeah. been much for this season so far. Like she was mostly a plot device in the first season mm-hmm. and it kind of felt like the way they were treating her was she has no personality whatsoever. She's just a prop in whatever the scene is. Yeah. Like, so I can't remember if there's ever been a hint of this before. Really the idea that she might've has. cared about Morty, yeah, I, but mm. yeah. Other than when she got like love potioned in the, uh, other universe right i honestly feel like it's a little bit out of nowhere like i I, she did go on a date with him and i'm sure she was impressed like she said like i think i'd be too boring for you so that that's an admission that this guy seems to have a lot going on so she's kind of into him in that way i I think she was uh, you know that might have been an excuse or something yeah Yeah. i think that was a nice way of putting it that's probably true i don't know i I feel like they're going somewhere with her i expect to see more of her at some point but like morty wants her bad and she is at least a little bit into him. Just, just fucking do it, guys. Just. I wonder do if the they're do. trying to set up like, because there's a lot of stuff this season that feels like it could be continued on. Oh yeah. I wonder if they're trying to set up for like the long haul. Like this isn't going to be stuff that's resolved this season, mm-hmm. but it'll be like new overarching stuff for the rest of the show that'll like slowly develop. I almost feel like every episode that we've seen so far has introduced a character that like could come back for like the season finale of this. Like in in this yeah. episode, there was uh, you know the the big tits McGee. Uh, in right. Pickle Rick, there was like the the that guy, machete guy or whatever his name was, El Tigre, right. that guy. Um, in episode one, there was Bird Person and What's Her Face. So those guys were obviously kind of like more important characters. I don't know. Oh, and uh, like Buckethead, uh, ex husband of Summer, I guess or whatever. Just seems like there's uh, a bunch of that. I, I'm wondering if we're gonna. I don't know. I almost feel like they're setting up for like some big event where they all get together and for like revenge or something. I don't know. Uh, that that that's my prediction. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think anybody who shows up in an ending gag is going to show up again. I feel like they do that to resolve a character so that we know they won't be back. I know what you're saying. That would make a lot of sense. But then again, El Tigre seems... I don't know. The fact that he's still out there, you know, makes it... Like, I can't see Big Tits <laughs> McGee yeah. coming back, because what would she do? Yeah, but, I don't know. I don't know. But El Tigre, if that's his name... I, no I don't know if that's his name. <laughs> I can't remember. We all know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, we'll... Yeah. Uh, We'll see, man. We'll see as it goes. Great episode. Uh, really good. Last episode was really good. Pickle Rick was really good. Well, let's let's keep this and up. And episode one was really good. There's only really been two episodes that we thought were weaker. So That's not bad. That's not terrible. Yeah. It's going it's going okay. I mean, and I didn't, not even that we thought were terrible, just that we're not amazing. Like below yeah. average Rick and Morty episodes, yeah. which is episode a disappointment. Episode two was but... more or less okay. Yeah, it was episode four was when I was like, ugh. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I've, there's episodes of seasons one and two that I think are worse than the others, so this mm-hmm. is not new. I don't expect the show to bat 100 at all times, but it is definitely fucking still solid. Absolutely. As long as they keep bringing in new ideas. I, I just I, I hope they stay away from, like, if there was, like, another Mr. Meeseeks episode, or just like, anything, yeah. like, reusing old ideas, <laughs> even in terrible. small ways, would be that would be an indication that things are, are starting to dry up. But as long as they keep doing stuff like this... Um, yeah, this is good. Like, this is just a new idea. That's the, that's the kind of stuff that we... Mm-hmm. I promise we will see that if uh, Dan 
or uh, or um, Justin ever left the show. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. They'll like latch they onto those tangible control. details as hard as they right. fucking can if those guys leave. Which, Which uh, I mean, Justin might... voices half the characters, and Dan voices the other half. So like, yeah. they can't. It would be real hard to do the show without them on it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, we're here's hoping. Good so far. Yeah. Keep it up, guys. All right, yeah, peace, bud. Bye. Bitch. Kill me. <laughs>